We're dodging poison darts and opening ancient tombs. That's right, it's Indiana Jones Cryptic from Funko Games. In this boulder rolling puzzle game, players follow the journal of famed archaeologist slash pulp hero Indiana Jones as he quests for lost relics from the ancient world. Through three adventures, players will decode glyphs, navigate dangerous crypts, and help Indy survive the many traps and tricks of hazardous locales. Because this is a puzzle game, I'm going to show you as little as possible to avoid spoilers. You will see some of the content, but not the solutions of the first puzzles. Setup begins by opening the box and then stopping because there's a big old stop sign telling you to read the instructions before handling the components. Since I read the instructions already, you have my permission to handle the components, but only after you've watched this video. Inside the box, you'll find the rule book, Indy's journal, which contains the game's puzzles, a collection of coins, two markers, one red, one black, this thing. I know what it is, but I'm not going to spoil it. And three envelopes labeled Covenant of the Raiders, The Cult of Doom, and Quest for the Grail. Opening the journal, you'll find instructions to open the Covenant of the Raiders envelope along with Indy's first entry. Read it aloud to your group, or if you're alone, still read it aloud. I mean, give the room some atmosphere, right? As players read through the journal, they'll encounter puzzles which each have a number of coins associated with them. Pull that number from the bag and set them nearby. This is known as the puzzle's coin pool. Each puzzle will also list any components needed from the envelope. No additional materials are needed, but players are welcome to take notes on scratch paper if they like. In order to continue through an adventure, players must attempt to solve the puzzles sequentially. Each puzzle has a solution that is either one or two words in length. Some puzzles even provide a list of possible answers written in red text, while others may show letter boxes which players must fill to complete the word or words. Once players think they know the answer, turn to the hint and answer section of the journal and reference the index to find the entry. If the answer is correct, players will earn the coins in the puzzle's coin pool, adding them into the adventure's envelope. This is the main scoring mechanism of the game. The more coins you have cumulatively in the adventure, the greater your achievement. However, if the answer is wrong, players will lose coins. In the case of a red letterbox answer, if they look up an answer that isn't in the index, they'll lose all the coins from the pool. Players will only ever lose coins from their pool, though. Coins already in the envelope from previous puzzles are there to stay. Additionally, each puzzle has a hint word printed at the bottom of the page. This word isn't a hint itself, but if you look up the word in the index, it provides a hint for the puzzle at the cost of a coin or coins. Puzzles also have an answer word. Again, it's not the actual answer, but it does provide an entry to go look up the answer if players are stuck or want to move on to the next puzzle. Completing a puzzle in this way grants no coins from the pool to the envelope. Pathways are another type of challenge players will need to overcome to complete the adventure. Each represents an action sequence and also require a number of coins added to their coin pool. Using the clear pathway screen and one of the dry erase markers, players will trace a route for Indy to navigate the challenge. First, place the pathway card on the table face up. Do not look at the other side. If you do, you will rapidly age and waste away into a skeletal horror. Place the clear screen atop the card. Locate the white start dot on the card and draw a dot on the screen over it. Finally, remove the screen and place it at least one marker's length away from the card. Using the black marker, one player will draw a continuous path from the dot to the goal area or areas listed in the journal, avoiding hazards but also trying to hit all the goals needed. When they hit an area where they estimate the goal to be, they draw an X in that spot. A player is allowed to erase and redraw before checking the key. When checking the key, if the center of the X is in the green goal area, they successfully interacted with that goal. Some pathways require the use of an action tool as noted in the journal. When this occurs, the player traces the red edge of the tool with the red marker. If the tool has two red edges, they may use either or switch between them. 
Players may use the tool up to the maximum listed in the journal. Each tool type can be used differently. Jump allows the player to cross gaps on the pathway card. Draw forces the player to draw their whole line using the tool, repeating an entire red edge end to end. Hit allows players to draw branches off their path to hit targets as if throwing an object at them. Once a path is completed, flip over the pathway card to show the back and place the clear screen on top to check your work. Using the key on the back of the journal, compare the path's journey with the key and lose coins for hitting an area of a certain color, losing only one coin max per color hit. Read the conclusion and gain any remaining coins from the pathway's pool. At the end of the adventure, count the coins in the adventure's envelope and compare the total to the rankings in the journal. Coins don't carry over between adventures, so you can start the next one during another game session or just start right away, why not? And that's the spoiler-free basics of Indiana Jones Cryptic. I'm Becca Scott, this is Good Time Society, and you are ready for an adventure, so grab your bullwhip, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and swing on back here for more great games and good times. Wha <laughs>